<laughs> Anybody know his word? Worthy what? He's supposed to be our guest speaker today and teach Bible study. I couldn't rest last night because I knew you and I had an appointment. I didn't know how to tell a man who had gotten on a plane and had been looking forward to something for the last three months that all bets were off because God had called a revival. I called my wife on the phone and she said to me, she says, I sure hate you ain't preaching tonight. I said, I don't because we've got a ram in the bush. Pastor Torrance walked to my office about 1.15. He said, Reverend, I'm not trying to get in your business, but you know you're supposed to be preaching tonight. It ate at me. So I called my bishop. I said, Bishop, here are the circumstances. What should I do? He told me what to do. I called the pastor on the phone and said, Pastor, I know you're in town. But God called a revival. And I have an appointment with the people. He said, Reverend, my plane is stuck and I can't even get out. I came to tell you tonight that anything that's coming that ain't supposed to, God's gonna ground it. You and I have an appointment. Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. Now Peter and John went up together. Ooh, Holy Ghost. Into the temple at the hour of prayer, beginning at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms and Peter fastened his eyes up on him with John and said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive what he had been asking for then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus rise up and walk he had been lame from birth and some of you have used what happened to you earlier on in life as an excuse to stay in your same position which is why I want to talk about today it's a lame excuse. Touch three people on your way down to your seat and say it's a lame excuse. Peter was the focal point of our discussion on last night. 
for we know that when God began the church, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity, the Comforter, left behind by God to be a helper. We don't need biblical linguistic jargon to know that he is a helper because one of the ways that you know help in the English language is by the prefix para. When you jump out of a plane, you have the help of a parachute. If you were to get sick right now, we would call the paramedics. When you're in trouble, you call the paraclete. The name of the Holy Ghost. It's a strong tower. Peter was the focal point of yesterday's discussion, but just one chapter later, we see he has company. <laughs> now, from here on, you're going to hear Peter and John. I wonder why God didn't make John Peter's assistant pastor at Pentecost. Then I come to realize that the topic is getting ready to change from worship to wonders. This is the first miracle enacted upon humanity in the New Testament church. And the reason why John had to be present is because the prophet said that whenever there was a testimony it had to be established out of the mouth of two. And so we know a miracle is coming because now Peter, the long wolf, now has company. He's a pair. He's got help. Peter and John are on their way up to the temple to pray. I wish I could just stay right there for a moment because people come to church for all kind of reasons. They come for miracles. They come for fashion shows. They come for free dating service. They come to grow their network marketing companies. But I wish more people would come to pray. He did not say, my house shall be called of all nations the house of business. He did not say, my house shall be called of all nations the house of the hookup. He says, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. And you want to know how to get out of your situation? Praise is all right, but it doesn't always do. Because you don't even have to be saved to praise him. Psalms 150 said, let everything that has breath praise. I feel glory. You don't even have to be saved to praise him. All you have to do is breathe. Even rocks will praise him. The trees will wave their limbs in praise. The grass will sway in praise. You don't need salvation to praise. Praise and worship are two totally different things. There are some things that only come by fasting and praying. I want to tell you, you need to work on your prayer life. 
you need to learn that theology works for the theologian, but neology works for the garbage man. That there's somebody in here that will tell you that when they lost their job, they went to the prayer closet. When the divorce came, they went to their knees. Do I have any prayer warriors who say I might not be on the prayer team, but when I send one up, God has a history of sending something down. Do I have any prayer warriors? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power the glory forever amen i hate to tell you that ain't no prayer if you go back and you check the holy record the disciples came to jesus and said teach us to pray like john taught his disciples and he said when you pray you ought to pray according to this format. Our Father, signifying who he is, which art in heaven, saying where he is. Because in order to pray right, you got to praise right. Because hallowed means holy. And there are a lot of people who go down on their knees asking. But before you ask anything of him, you need to say, Lord, thank you for what you've already done. And if you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. What people don't recognize is that praising is praying. That when you're thanking him, because most people don't know that a thinking saint is actually a thanking saint. For when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul shouts out hallelujah if i can get about 200 people to just start thinking i'll get 500 people to start thinking because let me tell you a thank you is contagious i dare you start thanking them for the std you didn't get i dare you start thanking them for the drug that didn't kill you i dare you start thanking them for the divorce that didn't cause you to blow your brains out. Is there anybody in here that has a think on your lips? And let me tell you, J. Moss said, I got a praise on the inside that I can't keep to myself. Any praise you can keep to yourself is a result of a blessing you have created yourself. But when God has done something for you, you can't help but say hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, I'm probably gonna give you 10 of those tonight. Let me borrow this one early. I want to say thank you because it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes. I could have been just another number with a tragic end. But I've come tonight to say thank you, Lord, for all, not just some, not a majority, but for all the things you have done for me. And I didn't just come to thank you for the things I liked. I came to tell you it was good that I was afflicted. I came to thank you for the hell I went through. I came to thank you for the house they took. And I'm not going to lose my mind over what they took. Because I'm going to need it for what you're about to say. I came to prophesy, don't lose your mind over a man that left you. You're going to need it for the man God's about to send. Don't you lose your mind over the woman that left you because you're going to need your mind for your good thing. Peter and John are going together because what God is getting ready to do is going to be so miraculous, you're going to need a witness to authenticate it. Do me a favor and ask your neighbor what the old preacher would ask. Do I have a witness? <laughs> Look at somebody and say, do I have a witness? <laughs> 
because what God is getting ready to do for me, I ain't going to be able to tell this thing by myself. What God's getting ready to do for me, if I tell people he did this, they're going to think I'm crazy. So I need you to hook up with me and promise that you'll document my journey because God's getting ready to give me more than I got room enough to receive. That's why you need to make sure you're standing by the right person because overflow spins on the person next to you. You don't want to throw your pearls to swine. So do me a favor and interrogate your neighbor and say, are you worthy of this glory that God's about to put on my life? Peter and John are going up to the tomb. And as Peter and John came to the gate that was called beautiful, they see a man who is lame, who has not the activity of his lower extremities, laying at a gate called beautiful, oxymoronic at best, paradoxical at worst, because it's a double entendre, because here is a man in an ugly situation at a beautiful gate. He has never walked because he is lame since birth, getting ready to do something that he has no experience in. Get ready for God to tell you to do things you've never done before. He is laying at the gate called beautiful. Well, Josephus suggests that in the Jewish chronological linguistic terminologies, there is no such thing in the lexicon as a gate called beautiful. You cannot find it in the, in the Greek language. You cannot find it in the Jewish lit. There is no such thing as a gate called beautiful. There are actually, according to Josephus, 10 gates to the sanctuary. 10 of the gates are either plated with gold or silver. But this particular gate that he is sitting at is made of Corinthian brass, more heavy and expensive than all, ten, all nine of the gates put together. So the gate is called beautiful, but it is not the gate called beautiful. It is called beautiful because of what it is made of. I came to tell you that you ain't beautiful because of how you look. You're beautiful because of what's on the inside of you. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here who says my nose might be wider than I want it to be. But as long as I keep these insides together, baby, I'm all of that. <laughs> Do I have anybody here say I might be a little overweight, but I got a good heart on the inside. <laughs> and some of us are underweight on the outside. <laughs> and some of us are overweight on the inside. But I came to tell somebody in here, this is the season not for you to lose weight. This is the season for you to gain weight. I got Bible. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Slap somebody say, I'm going to gain weight in this season. I've been in a hurry for the last two years. But I'm going to sit at my gate called beautiful. And I'm going to wait until my change comes. Anybody been waiting? Anybody been waiting for a long time? I came to prophesy and release a word of knowledge that God's about to send your Peter and your John. There is somebody who is coming that has what you need. And don't think it ain't God because you're going to be begging for alms and your Peter is going to say, silver and gold, have I none? But I do have something that money cannot buy. Are you here with me tonight? The Bible says that he is at the gate called beautiful. The Bible says that, that somebody must have picked him up because the Bible says he was laid. He was laid at the gate called Beautiful. He had somebody who was close enough to him to pick him up and take him where he could not get for himself. Watch this same place, same gate, the gate called Beautiful. Same place, two different purposes. One group goes to worship. The other one goes to beg. Peter and John go to go worship. The man goes there to beg. They've got the same place. But they're going there for two different reasons. They got the same place, but two different reasons. I'm telling you right now, some of y'all sitting next to somebody, you in the same place. But y'all came here for two different reasons. 
You, you sit next to somebody, y'all, y'all here right now, just do, do an assessment, look left and right, y'all in the same place. But, but, but y'all came for different reasons, and I came to tell you, don't let their reason hinder why you came. You came here to worship. They came here to watch. <laughs> let them watch while you worship. Do I have somebody that has a Bartimaeus spirit that'll start shouting until you get on somebody's nerve? And when they look at you like you're crazy, look them right in the eye and say, pardon me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. They're gonna look at you a little funny and tell you to sit down. But I want you to turn up the volume and say, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Matter of fact, do me a favor and tell your neighbor for the second time. Say, neighbor, I came to get on your nerve because I know when praises go up, blessings come down. And since you didn't bring my blessing to church with you, I'm not going to try to impress you. I might irritate you because I'm looking to the hills from which cometh my help. And all my help comes from the Lord. Do I have any worshipers in the room? Same place, two different reasons. But don't let why they came disrupt why you came. I want you to get what you came here to get. This is your last night of revival. The devil has been bothering some of y'all a long time. He has been in your family. He has been in your children. He has been in your mind. And you have not yet told him that he's a liar. Get it in your mouth right now and say, devil, you are a liar. I've been at this gate too long. I've been lame too long. I've been using my daddy as an excuse too long. I've been using my mama as an excuse too long. I've been using my job as an excuse too long. I came to tell somebody your legs are about to get strength and it's time for you to get out of that position. Matter of fact, somebody ought to just start shaking it and speak to your legs like Ezekiel and says, I command these bones to live. Or you ought to speak to your situation. <laughs> By the time today is over, everything that the devil has done to you, you're gonna pick up your bed and walk. <laughs> Somebody walk it out, walk it out. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, walk it out, walk it out. <laughs> I want you to walk it out, walk it out. <laughs> and every time they tell you you can't do it, <laughs> and every time you get weak, <laughs> After you've done all you can, stand in it. Shout and tell somebody to stand. Somebody say stand. Even when you feel like falling, stand. And that's why you need Jesus. Because he's the everlasting arm that you can lean on. And when my mother and father have forsaken me, there is somebody who sticketh closer than a brother. Do I have any standards in here today? Matter of fact, tell your neighbor I'm getting ready to raise my standards. <laughs> I'm not falling anymore. <laughs> I'm not sitting anymore. <laughs> I'm not standing anymore. <laughs> I'm not selling for less anymore. <laughs> I'm getting ready to stand for what God told me I could have. <laughs> Anybody know this is the year of greater? <laughs> Matter of fact, turn around three times. <laughs> and every time you get an about face, say greater. <laughs> turn around again and say greater. <laughs> Turn around again and say greater. Now seal it with this, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now I wish I had about 400 people who would say, I don't even need a reason. I'm getting ready to take a praise break because I just had a flashback for what the Lord has done for me. Now I dare you to start losing your mind right now and let your David know I didn't come to play with you and I don't give a damn what you think about me. I came to worship God. I came to worship him in spirit and in truth. And when praises go up, blessings come down. Somebody shout hallelujah. A poor man at an expensive gate. A poor man at an expensive gate. A poor man at an expensive gate. He needs money. The gate can solve his problem. 
Well, then if the money was the answer, why is he still lame? Let me tell you, you will come up against some stuff that money cannot buy. You're going to come up against some hurt that money can't solve. You're going to come up against some stuff that your money can't get you out of. That's why you need to understand that you're going to need a miracle. We talked yesterday about worship. But let me tell you what happened after they worshiped. The first thing that we see in the text is after the worship, we see a wonder. I wanted you to know tonight that you are a candidate for a wonder. You are a candidate for a wonder. You are a candidate. Somebody high five your neighbor for the third time and tell him you are a candidate for a wonder. He's about to get a miracle. And just because he is in the way of a worshiper, he gets a miracle. Don't miss this because they're coming to the temple to worship. And what he has found out is that I can't walk, but I'm going to come and situate myself in the company of the worshiper. If I just put myself in the proximity of somebody who knows how to worship, maybe I could get my miracle. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody in here, you better look for somebody who got their hands in the air and find your way over to them because just by chance, you might receive a miracle because you're in the company of a worshiper. Oh, I wish I had somebody who got what I just said. I dare you look around for somebody who ain't too mean. Look around for somebody who got their hands in the air. Look around for somebody who ain't scared and get right in front of them and say, neighbor, while you worship, I'm going to get in your way because just by chance, God might bless me because you're blessing him. Oh, you got the wrong neighbor. You better find somebody who's got a shout on their lips and shout, neighbor, when I move, you move just like that. When I jump, you jump just like that. If I clap, you clap just like that. If I run, you run just like that. Now somebody, everybody, lift up your voice and shout, yeah! Say, neighbor, will you be my praise partner? Because over the next 15 seconds, I'm getting ready to dance on the devil's head. You don't know what he's done to me. You don't know where he brought me from. You don't know I almost killed myself. You don't know I almost lost my mind. But there was a lame excuse. I'm about to get strength in my legs. I'm about to get strength in my praise. Shout yeah! He's a lame man at a beautiful gate. He's a poor man at an expensive gate. He shows us a lesson that you better stop going into environments that match your condition. Oh God, you didn't miss me. 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 Just because you're feeling bad don't mean you got to go to bad places. Just because you're doing bad don't mean you got to go to places like that. Just because you're insecure don't mean you got to settle. You better stop going in environments that match your condition. I don't care if it is ugly. Find a beautiful place. Do I have anybody in here? He goes to a gate called beautiful. Check who you're next to. Because you're going to need them over the next 20 minutes. You're going to need them. Because everything the devil has tried to do to you, getting ready to fall off. Every area you have been limping, you are about to start leaping. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm in the season of the wonders. Not only is he a candidate for a wonder, 
Now he is a candidate for a walker. He is walking. Silver and gold. Have I none? But that ain't what you need anyway. In the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. I would ask you, what was the most important word in the entire sentence? Get up, walk, rise immediately. I would suggest for conjecture that the most important word in the sentence was Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Well, then I thought that bowing is better than lame. That when he says Jesus, something happened. The Bible says that when he says rise up and walk, Pastor Corey, he got up immediately. Now that's amazing because if he had called on the name of anybody else, it would have been eventually. Uh, if he had called a doctor, the doctor says you wanna walk? Well, there is something we can do. Come down to the office. There is some paperwork you gotta fill out. There are some things that we have called stem cell research. We can take stem cells from your spinal cord. We can inject them in your legs and see if they grow. And then we can put your legs in braces. And then we can send you to physical therapy. And then we'll maybe get you to limp. And then in a year, maybe you'll be able to walk. But there are no guarantees. But he went to a doctor that never lost a patient. And God says, I don't need your stem cells because I created them. You ain't going to have to put on no braces. When I command you to get up and walk, it's going to happen immediately. Oh, I prophesy that what's getting ready to happen for you is getting ready to happen immediately. Touch somebody and tell them by the time the service is over, you're going to be walking in a different area. By the time the service is over, the miracle is already going to be at the house. By the time the service is over, the headache is already going to be gone. By the time the service is over, the cancer is going to already be dried up. By the time the service is over, you ain't going to be rejected anymore. Find somebody and say immediately. Find somebody and tell them immediately. I dare you to lay your hands on them and tell them immediately. As a matter of fact, some of y'all don't believe it. Because if you believed it, you'd be praising God right now. Because you got to send this praise in advance. Because if it's going to happen immediately, you got to have a praise on the other side of immediately. Now over the next 30 seconds, I need every person who believes that God can do it immediately to start praising the Lord. I dare you to open up your mouth. I dare you to lift up your hands. I dare you to start a worshiping and say, I'm not going to wait until the battle is over. I'm going to shout. Come on, shout immediately, immediately, immediately. I need somebody over here to act like God has already done it. I need somebody over here that no God can handle your enemies. I need somebody over here to say, devil, you should have killed me when you had the chance. But I feel something happening on the inside. I feel something happening. I feel so much better since I laid. Touch somebody and say, walk it out. Walk it out. Walk into your destiny. Walk into your season. Walk into your miracle. I'm going higher to the next level. I'm going to walk up Sinai. And if there by chance is not a ram in the bush, whatever you need, I stand ready. Not my mother, not my father. Somebody shout, walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. didn't hear what I said. I didn't say stand. I said walk, 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 
walk. Put your left foot in. Put your right foot in. One over the other. Walk. 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 I'm moving to another level. Walk. something is about to happen. There's a rumbling and a shaking. Somebody say, whoa! Somebody shout, devil, don't come for me. Don't come for my family. Because I got authority to step on the serpent's head. Oh Christ, the son of the rock I stand. Ah, all of the crowd is seeking sex. Walk, walk into your destiny. Walk into your miracle. He said in the name of Jesus Rise up and walk well, that's, that's why it happened. He called on the right name. El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. That's why when he called on Jesus, see, had he called on Confucius, he might have got the left leg, but not the right leg. Had he called on Muhammad, he might have got the left leg, but not the right leg. But when you call on Jesus, the all-sufficient one. Will thou be made whole? Tell somebody I ain't come for partial deliverance. I came for the whole thing. I didn't come here to feel good today and be depressed tomorrow. When I come through this storm, I'm done with crying. Slap somebody and shout, neighbor, I've cried. My last tip, if they gon' leave, let them go. But I am done with that situation. You got the wrong neighbor, look at somebody else. Look them in the eye. Grab hands with them. And shout neighbor, together, we gon' walk it out. When you get weak, lean on my shoulder. When I get weak, can I trust you? Yeah! Find you somebody else. You got the wrong neighbor. I need you to find somebody. Say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to walk to the next dimension. Yes! Walk it out. Walk it out. Why do you have to walk? Because there's a wall. That you gonna have to walk around seven times. But on the seventh time, on the seventh day, after you finish walking, you gonna have to shout. Shout until it comes down. Shout until it falls. Let everything that has breath. You don't 
believe it. The Bible says after he was healed, he went back to the temple and started praising God. Because after the wonder and after the walking, he became a witness. God says the only people I'm blessing in this next season are people who don't mind telling somebody who did it for them. Look at your neighbor and shout neighbor for the eighth time. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! almost there. You done moved from praise to worship. Now it's time to give them glory. Tell your neighbor, I need some room. I need a little room, little room. I need a little room, little room, little room. I need some room. Because this glory that I'm about to give, I'm going to need all three square feet around me. Now on the count of three, I want you to release a praise in this house and let the devil know that everything you told me was a lame excuse. I am more than enough. I am the head and not the tail. The rape, he tried to take you out with it. The abortion, he tried to depress you with it. But that's a lame excuse. It's time for you to step over. What happened? And what you did, now give him a prize. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody shout yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ref, why you got us doing all of that? Because after God healed him, he used two things to worship God. His legs and his lips. Let me tell you, you can act how you want to act, but you can't worship him unless you're using your legs and your lips. Now, I know some of y'all sitting there, but you're saying something. Some of y'all standing, but you ain't saying nothing. But over the next two minutes, you're going to use your legs and your lips. Use your legs and your lips. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and shout yeah!
somebody say, it's a lame excuse. You could walk if you get the right person speaking in your life. <laughs> See, the man who carried him never carried him anywhere where he could get help. He only carried him to a place that kept him in his condition. And I personally think they had a business arrangement because he probably got paid for dropping him off. Percentage of whatever he gained that day. You need to find people in your life who don't gain from your lameness. You need people in your life who want you to rise up and walk you see that person next to you they've been through hell and high water too but they're not going to let that be an excuse to be lame some of us came here today limping who am I talking to you, you, didn't, you didn't come to this revival with no notice I mean we didn't do no marketing, we just said, the Lord said it's a revival. I guarantee you, guarantee you if we would have tried to market it and say we're going to have a revival two, three weeks down the line, four months down the line, the Holy Ghost said, I didn't tell you to do it when you wanted to do it, I didn't tell you to do it when you could prepare to do it, I told you to do it when I said do it. Look at what the Holy Ghost will do. You need people in your life who don't benefit from you laying at the gate. <laughs> you need people who are in your life that'll help you own the gate. Last night when I left here, I text Will on the phone. It had to be about midnight. I said, Will, you were remarkable yesterday in worship. I wanted to let him know because Whatever you praise, you'll get more of. Why would you get jealous because somebody performed well? Why would you be jealous because somebody has a gift other than you? If you just do what you're supposed to do. Be anything in life, but don't be a hater. Be anything but a hater. You got to help people get to their destiny. Can I tell y'all something? The secret to what Felicia and I have done is we have just helped other people get where they wanted to get. And somehow we find ourselves where we want to be. Because if you help enough people achieve what they want to achieve, the byproduct is God will give you what you're asking for. Don't, don't be a crab in a barrel pulling other people down. In fact, if you see somebody getting ready to get out of the barrel and you're still at the bottom, push them out. You push the right person out there, come back to the barrel and say this way. You know, we were, we were uh, here yesterday and we were helping women and men who had worked for the government and it's been shut down and they hadn't been paid. And I'm reminded of what one of our members said something to me uh, some time ago and, and, and she was absolutely right. She was absolutely right. Mama Maddie, are you here tonight? I don't even know if she's here. Is Mama Maddie Allen here? Is she here? She may not be. She said something to me that struck home. She says, son, she says, our church has a lot of young people in it. She's been with us since the beginning. She said, our church has a lot of, lot of young people in it. And she said, uh, but some of us older members, we struggling too. Hit me like a ton of bricks because, you know, 
She's right. She's right. She's right. Is there a senior in here that has been struggling to make it, just make it work? Is there a senior in here? Somebody would consider yourself. Come here, mother. Come here, mother Henny. This is Mama Henny, y'all. Y'all give her a hand. <laughs> Mama Henny has been here with us since we started to. And Mama, you have, I remember days where you would grab my hands and pray with me. And uh, just saying, Lord, I hope we make it. You remember those days? When we were in office buildings and TV stations with no air condition and ants in the bathroom. <laughs> um, even then, she believed in us. Y'all remember that, don't you, Mama Owens? Like, some of y'all, you come now and you see this, but can I tell you all, we used to have worship in a TV station with two toilets. And the doors didn't lock. So we had to put somebody outside of the door to make sure that nobody walked in on you while you were using it. And it was ants crawling on the toilet, so you had to hover. And a lot of our, and, and mama was a senior, and, and let me tell you something, young people. Mama, and she'll tell you, she, she took over our, our, our seasoned saints ministry and all of that. And, you know, when you, when you hot at 20, that's different than being hot at 50 and 60. Mm-hmm. Because, see, y'all, and I'm not being facetious, I'm telling you what she told me. You know, she said, you needed to be hot to be hot. She says, no matter what the temperature is, I'm hot. And you stayed right with us. And you prayed with us. I remember you laying your hands on us and praying. And we had another check that we were going to give to another government worker. But I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Because... Truthful, if it ain't no you, it ain't no us. And when you had the strength and you had the money and everything was going well for you, you were helping us when we didn't have any of that. And uh, Jackie's gonna give it to you today. You're not gonna have to wait on it. I love you. said my hot water heater just went out and it just got fixed today tell me won't God reimburse you come on y'all give God some praise I remember she was suffering with vertigo and she would come in church and be dizzy didn't know if the ground was shaking underneath her, but she was there every Sunday. Let me tell y'all something. When you start walking, don't you forget those who was there when you was lame. Better have a long memory. Better remember who was there for you when you couldn't be there for yourself. And don't not do anything for anybody because you can't do something for everybody. Do it in increments. Do it when you can. See, she was there for me when Felicia and I were laying at the gate called Beautiful. And I remember when our car, the oil changed, needed, we needed an oil change because we couldn't afford to get the oil change. And it, it, it just, I, I, I can't... Can you imagine? I mean, and the oil change wasn't but 20 or $30, and we just couldn't get it done. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We just couldn't get it done. I remember being so broke that we couldn't even turn on the heat, and the people across from us were selling firewood for $10, and we didn't even have the $10 to go get the firewood. I remember our answer to coal was more clothes, not heat. We had to decide. 
Baby, you gonna go to work today? Okay, well, if you gonna go to work, I'm gonna stay at home because we ain't got enough gas for both of us to go nowhere. And, and I'm talking about just six or seven years ago. I, I, this ain't history. <laughs> this ain't 30 years ago. This is, this is just not that long ago. I'll show you how fast. When, when God touches you, he'll do it immediately. He'll do it immediately. He will do it immediately. When we started this church, I was the lame one. I remember Felicia had $600 cash. I had zero. To be more specific, I had $12.86. I remember it like it was yesterday. Together we had $612.86 and she had 600 of it. I remember she said, well, we're getting ready to start this church. She said, um, I want to take the kids on a vacation. Now, our idea of a vacation was Fiesta, Texas in San Antonio. And we went down there. I remember we drove. The best part of the whole trip was the Krispy Kreme light was on right before we got there. <laughs> Woo! I feel like a, you might as well play, Woo, Jesus. Baby said, that light is on. We made a U-turn, went over there and got them donuts. And if you, if you know anything about being broke, you have a conversation with your kids before you get in any place. Now we tell them, now look, you better get full before you get in here because once we get in here, no hot dogs, no cotton candy. I remember we got up to that gate and we were getting ready to go in. And Felicia took them $600 out and she put it in my hand so that the girls could see me pay. Yep. That's a real one. Put it in my hand so them girls could see me pay. And those girls are under the illusion that I have taken care of them their whole life and they have no idea that I just got in the driver's seat that I was a passenger <laughs> with them the first few years trying to make this thing live and tearing up our whole bank account, throwing all of the savings account in here to keep it open. And whenever Jackie and them would count the money and we didn't have enough money to pay the bills, I was writing whatever salary they was giving us, I was giving it right back to the church just to be able to pay the bills. And when we needed furniture in the church, this is, this is documented. This is real talk. We needed furniture in the church. Felicia and I didn't have furniture in our house because we gave all of the furniture in our house to the church so that all the offices could be furnished. And I'm going to tell you something. You go back in that office, in the coal office right now, that couch and that table came right from my house. That stuff is old. I need to get you something new because it ain't going to last much longer. I'm going to tell you that right now. I got it from one of those, you know, those furniture stores that ain't got no name. You just know it's a furniture store because there's a couch in the window and you drive past it and you know they sell furniture but they ain't got no name, ain't no prices on nothing. You walk in there and say, how much is that? And they say, what you got? You know what I mean? And, and that's how I learn. Whenever they say, what you got? I say, I ain't got nothing. I'm going to have to go borrow whatever you say it is. <laughs> and uh, I remember we would go to McDonald's to feed our girls and I'm just talking about being lame. I'm just talking about being lame, and it's a lame excuse. I remember us going to McDonald's and having to feed a family of four at the time before Caitlin came, and all I had was $20 every time we went, and I had to give a speech in the car. Now listen, anything that go over $20, we can't get. All of our meals had, I'm, all of our meals had to fit in that 20. Lord knows when they start raising the prices because the burgers used to be 69, 79, and 89. And when they went up to a dollar, I just, I started panicking. Today I had a meeting talking about buying a Chick-fil-A. Ain't that something? Ain't that amazing? I, I, isn't that amazing that, that I, I could just be four or five years ago not being able to buy a hamburger and today talking about buying a franchise. What is that? 
I know the devil tried to block me because the meeting was at 9.30. I called Jackie at 9.30. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Jackie. It was a gate issue. This morning, I had a meeting at 9.30 with uh, um, the, the peop some people from Chick-fil-A for this meeting at 9.30. They met me here at the church. And I couldn't get out of the neighborhood because the gate was broke. And I called Nicole, and I said, Nicole, I might be going to jail, and I need you to come get me, because they told me that it was going to be 22 minutes before they could get it open, and <laughs> now if I tell this story and I go to jail, y'all going to come get me? I got out my car, and I pushed that gate open myself, just, just broke it, boom. And then became a highway patrolman and told everybody, <laughs> let them all out because they had me blocked in. I had to go. I got here at 9.54 and I looked the man in his eye and I said, sir, in 10 years of, nine years of pastor's church, I've never been late to a meeting. This is the guy's honest truth. I hate late. For me, on time is 15 minutes early. Okay? I have never been late for a meeting, God forgive me. I came here late today and looked at the man and I just started apologizing and said, sir, I'm so sorry, I'm never late, I'm never late. He said, well, I always am late and I'm surprised I'm on time for this meeting, so let's go. I was like, thank you, Jesus. It was a gate issue. And uh, we're almost there, it's almost done. And, and uh, all of that from just six or seven years ago, 15903 Yorktown Crossing in a one bedroom apartment with two girls sleeping on a leather couch. And Felicia and I sleeping in the bed with a room so small that we had to do this just to go to the bathroom around the bed. And I could have stayed there, but it would have been a lame excuse. It would have been a lame excuse. Because you and I had an appointment. And I promise you, I will never go anywhere without giving you the directions. God has been good to me. He's been good to me. Better than I deserve. Better than I deserve. Better than you. You all, you don't, you're so much smarter than me. You're so much brighter than me. You have so much more potential than me. You just don't know it. If the light switch ever goes off and you realize you really can walk, you'll stop laying at that gate of excuses talking about what you can't do. And I have no man to put me in the pool. And because I went through this, I'm this way. And because I went through that, let me tell you, if I told you my life, you would throw up. Every time I look at my mother, I am reminded of how far 